Morning Trainiacs! When I first started out on YouTube, I was like the only person doing any triathlon content. Since that happened, a lot of pros have come in and started sharing a lot of their own training. And that's one of the coolest things about YouTube is that we get an inside look into what Lionel Sanders, Sarah True, Lucy Charles, Sarah Crowley, Sam Long, just to name a few athletes, are actually doing. And one really interesting thing came out of a Lionel Sanders video from a few weeks back where I don't think a lot of people actually saw what was going on just barely off in the corner of the video. I think we saw one thing that a lot of us can emulate that maybe Lionel didn't intend to share. So what we've got here is Lionel is doing a bike workout and we're seeing notes that he's posted up on the wall. And his photographer, his videographer, Talbot Cox, he ended up going over to the wall here to show one really big key message about how you string together workouts and that it's not just one workout that is epic that ends up making a big race, it's that you string together multiple workouts that are just good over the course of several months. And that's what actually results in a really good race. But in the corner of that, as we're about to see, we get a little insight into Lionel's training. So there is the message, but what we see here in the corner are actually some power targets. And if you end up letting this play out, we can see, boom, these are his stages, power meter, power targets. And we've got aerobic is, we can put this all up on the screen here, we'll list this out and you can pause it and maybe take a screenshot. Aerobic is 210 to 230 watts. I'm guessing this is endurance low, endurance mid, endurance high, ranging from 230 watts to 240 watts. But the really interesting part down here are the race pace intervals. Now he's got Ironman 350 to 375 watts. Half Ironman 375 to 400 watts. Olympic 400 to 425 watts. And Sprint 425 to 450 watts. Now, us mere mortals are probably looking at this going like, oh my God, for an Ironman, Lionel is doing 350 to 375 watts? I don't think so. And I think that's where the lesson about how we can perform our bike train to emulate Lionel Sanders comes in. Now, why I don't think that those are his actual race power targets are because of this. Remember this, Ironman, 350 to 375 watts. We can actually go back and Lionel published a couple of his best bike splits ever. This was Ironman Arizona where he did a phenomenal race. He biked 403 and there his normalized power was 317 for an Ironman. We also have the power file for his 2017 Ironman World Championship where he placed second going 413 for the course and his normalized power was 326. This is right in line with where I hear some of the best bike riders in triathlon are sitting, somewhere in that 300 to 330 watts for a full Ironman. What we can also see is at the one hour Canadian record attempt that Lionel did, there's a spot here where he gives us a bit of an indication of what his one hour power is, which is theoretically his true FTP, his one hour max power. Victor's assessment was quite true. Uh, the first 30 minutes, not too bad. And I had done a 30 minuter and, and I was like, okay, I think I can hold this. I held in my practice, I held 380 for, for 30 minutes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it don't even start until 30 minutes. So right there where he says that he did a 30 minuter at 380 Watts. My guess is that he was doing an opener before the one hour attempt at maybe just around, but slightly under the power that he was going to do for the one hour. So I'm guessing that his one hour max power is theoretical FTP is somewhere in the three 80 to 400 mark, I'm, I'm just gonna guess. Now when we go back and we see the stages power meter targets, what we know is that he isn't doing his Ironman racing at 350 to 375 watts because that's right up at his max power for one hour, let alone four. 
we have to assume that this is Lionel Sanders here in a stages power meter, which we know is very accurate when it's calibrated properly, but here's where the lesson is. Several years ago when I got into longer distance racing, I was starting to train for those longer distance races at roughly my race target power. I was starting to get comfortable at the race target power of 225 watts. I would do my intervals at that target race power and then I would go to the race and then I would try to meet those interval power targets. And I didn't really have huge success. I was in like the 220s per 90K and a half Ironman. But when I really stepped up and started being able to do a 218 half Ironman bike split, a 213 half Ironman bike split, it was when I learned that you actually don't train at your race power for the preparation of a race, you train above your race power. And I think that's what Lionel is doing. So what we do on our app is instead of saying, go do race effort, bike intervals, we say go do 5% above your race effort, 10% above your race effort, 20% above your race effort. What we're instructing athletes to do in their long bike followed by a brick leading into a race in the last three months is we're saying go do your target race effort plus a little bit. Sometimes these are plus a little bit based off of power, which is easy to do for a half Ironman and an Ironman. Sometimes it's plus that five or 20% based off of rate of perceived exertion, which is much easier to do for a sprint or an Olympic race. But the idea is that you train above your target race effort with intervals, and then you come down to a level that is much more manageable because you've been doing higher power with long, long intervals. And then by the time you get to the race and you step down that little bit, all of a sudden it's gonna feel very cruisy, very attainable. Mentally, it's gonna be easier for you to hit in the race and you're going to be fresher for the bike. So when you're training for a triathlon, what I recommend is you do one bike workout a week that is race targeted. In that bike workout a week, you do longer intervals, anywhere from 10 minutes up to two hours even for the Ironman distance. When you're at the shorter end of that, being the 10 minute intervals, maybe you're 20 to 25% either power or rate of perceived exertion above your target race effort. When you're at the longer end of that, really long, you're maybe five to 10% above. As you start progressing and getting closer and closer to the race, you make the intervals longer and longer, you make the rest shorter and shorter, and what ends up happening is you're getting closer and closer and closer to an actual race effort that you know you can go and execute on race day because you've gone and done intervals at even more power for long durations. How much is a long duration? Well, for Ironman, you're probably looking at a total of two to two and a half hours of intervals. For half Ironman, somewhere around 75 minutes to 90 minutes of total intervals. For an Olympic distance race, somewhere in the 30 to 45 minutes of total intervals. And for a sprint, we're looking at 20 to 30 total minutes of intervals. And if you do this, you're gonna have a ripping kind of bike and you're gonna be really fresh for the run. Now, if a lot of this is too much for you to handle, but you do wanna get this kind of training, there's a link in the description below to our training app that you can go and try for free for 14 days. If you like it, stick around, it's just 57 bucks a month. If you wanna see the full video from Lionel, you can check it out right over there. And we put a lot of work into finding information that we hope masters and age group athletes will find helpful. So if you did find this helpful, I would love if you hit the like button below. Later, Trainiacs.